Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Messing With Their Money. Beloved family, our text says, Once, when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female servant who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune-telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. Acts 16, 16 to 90. If you don't want someone to turn on you, don't mess with their money. I know that the money is the root of all evil. Do funny things to some people. Give me a nickel, brother, can you spare a dime? Money will drive some people out of their minds. Almighty dollar. For the love of money, people will lie. Lord, they will cheat. For the love of money, people don't care who they hurt or beat. Don't let, don't let money rule you. The OJs knew what they were talking about. Paul and Silas was messing with their money in Philippi. So they went to the authority and took out a warrant on Paul and Silas and wanted to throw them in prison. They stripped them and beat them with rods. Then the magistrates had them flogged and thrown into prison, all because they were messing with the slave girl owner's money. And what was their crime? Casting out a demonic spirit in the girl that was testifying and prophesying? Oh yes, as Paul and Silas obviously show us, you can make enemies for doing the work of God. Do you think that the enemy is pleased with the work you are doing for God? Praying, healing God's people, sacrificing time, talent, and treasures for the kingdom? And that may be the very reason for your struggle and adversity. Whenever trouble comes, the first thing others do is start accusing like Satan. He must have done something wrong. I know she wasn't right. He got caught up because he sinned and he was trying to do something and it didn't work. Oh, I remember those exact words from a friend that I went to when trouble came to my doorstep. He said, well, quote, you tried something and it didn't work, end quote. No, it doesn't have to always be so. Listen, trouble can come to you when you are in the middle of righteousness. Ask Daniel, ask Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro, I mean a bad Negro. And Paul said, what is the crime, your honor? Casting out a demonic spirit that prophesy and tell people fortune? Oh, you didn't know? Yes, demons can prophesy. I was shocked to recently learn about the Psychic Secrets Radio. While online, I pulled up a sermon message that looked interesting, only to discover the message was on how to go deeper in your gifts. Oh, as I begin to read the description, I found this title. Learn how to heighten your abilities. Learn from these ladies with 40 plus years experience. (laughs) Now I'm thinking to myself, God, there are still psychics advertising as psychics in 2022? I mean, I haven't heard of any since Miss Cleo. You know, call me now. And secondly, God, you allowing them to be doing this for 40 plus years and they're advertising, join every Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific, and 9 p.m. Stockholm. Not only is this radio broadcast airing in this day, but they are global. And here you believe that only Bible-believing and Bible-toting people prophesy. 
And at the end of the synopsis or endorsement, to listen to them, they sign this salutation, love and light, Zeta and Angel Anne. You must be kidding. The devil is a liar, master in disguise. Well, Paul and Silas obviously knew that even the demonic spirits can give you a word. So we need to be careful of who's using this gift for corn or coin. You can have a gift and use it the wrong way. Pay me for my gift. No, Jesus never charged a dime for healing or for a word. Psychics do that. And I was shocked that some were still using this title. I just thought some of them were still operating under the titles of prophet or prophetess. Uh-oh. You know like how some people change their clan suit for business suits or uniforms? Oh, who am I talking to here today? Now, if I'm rubbing you the wrong way in this seat today, then you must have made the secret switch. Maybe you are not a prophet of God, but a false prophet of Baal. Yeah, he had prophets too. Oh, and you didn't know Satan still has some power and wisdom? It was just corrupted. God don't take his gifts back. Yes, Satan knows the Bible and he has some power. When Moses dropped his stick and it turned into a serpent, the power of the magicians did the same thing. Only their power is weaker and counterfeit because Moses' snake ate their snake. Because the owners lost their money maker, they had these men of God arrested, beaten, flogged, and imprisoned. And the enemy uses the same tricks today. He wants you arrested, beaten, flogged, and imprisoned. No true justice involved. Only the wicked schemes of Satan to first accuse, steal, and destroy. But praise be unto our God that midnight is a change of day. Let me say that for someone who need to hear this word today. Listen, midnight is the darkest hour of the day when the clock strikes 12 midnight to end one day or season. The very next minute it begins a new day and a new season. But no matter if it's still dark outside, the light is on its way. Approaching midnight, light fades away. Oh, but one minute later dawns a new day and darkness is on its way out. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but your midnight has come and it is on its way out. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I want you to do like Paul and Silas did. The text says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. Acts 16, 12-26. Midnight, they prayed and sang hymns to God. Suddenly, there was a violent earthquake. At once, the prison doors flew open. In the darkest hour, midnight, they began to pray and praise God, singing songs to the Most High. Then suddenly, the foundations of what was binding them captive was shaken to loose them. In the middle of this dark hour, I encourage you, family, to just bless God, pray, and praise Him. In that which seems to have you bound. I say seem to have you bound because actually you are already free in Christ Jesus. The enemy will try to destroy you, especially when you mess with their money. Ah, but God will deliver and shake anyone who messes with his children. So Satan, don't mess with us. Much love.